What's going on, Gecko fam? Today, we're gonna talk about my favorite morph, the Tangerine Leopard Gecko. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. Okay, now I will save future videos for an in-detail review about different lines of tangerine, the history of tangerine, the beginnings of where it all started. For today's video, I wanna focus on what is the tangerine leopard gecko in today's market and what should you be pursuing about tangerines. So as you can imagine, the word tangerine simply means orange. So if you have a tangerine leopard gecko, that means that you are claiming to have an orange leopard gecko. Now, because tangerine is a line bred trait. If you don't know what line breeding is, check out my video here in the top right corner on line breeding. We have two videos that talks about how you get an orange leopard gecko. But because tangerines are line bred traits, it basically means you need to take orange geckos, breed them to other orange geckos to further get an orange gecko. So if you take an orange gecko and you breed it to something that isn't orange, you're gonna get something in between. You'll get a yellowy orange mix if you were to breed these two together and also what's really cool is there's a lot of green hues and purple hues in the tangerine bloodlines and there's a lot of green hues in the bold stripe bloodlines so by combining these two color morphs right here you really do create something amazing plus all of that dark contrasted pattern also explodes in the combination of these babies I really like and look forward to mixing the tangerines with the bold project and the white and yellow project because that just really explodes the color palette of brightness and variety and creates some really random great looking geckos. We work with primarily two main tangerine bloodlines. There's multiple tangerine bloodlines that you can work with, but the two that we have chosen to work with at this moment are Inferno and Mandarin. And the main difference between Inferno and Mandarin is that Infernos tend to be a bright orange coloration, like pure orange coloration. They also tend to have pretty good carrot tail, which is the orange in the tail going down, and most of them are bred with Tremper albino, which is what this one is. This little gal is a Tremper albino, Inferno cross, so that means that the parents were not pure Inferno, but they were Inferno crossed with a couple other different lines of tangerine. Mostly what you find in the hobby today is going to be crossed lines of tangerine. I don't know if there's really any way that we can prove that one tangerine is 100% one line, because what is a line? essentially. A lion is a name that was given to a unique looking animal that earned the right to be called that name. So way back when, when people were combining orange geckos to get more orange geckos, they started coming up with names. Mandarin, Electric, Inferno. But to get those orange geckos that were named those names, I think there was a lot of crossbreeding going on. Mandarins being bred with Infernos, Infernos being bred with Electrics, Electrics being bred with other lines of tangerine. I think there was a lot of that going on to selectively further the project and hold back the best of the best geckos. I don't think it was like the person who created Inferno only bred Inferno geckos together. That would have taken way too long, way too many outcrossings. I think most likely what happened with the Inferno is that they took certain lines of orange that they were working with and other lines of orange that they were working with and combined them together to get what we have. So that's why you could take any two orange geckos in the hobby today, start inbreeding them, and you might start to see some defects popping out after a couple generations, because I think that those geckos were already inbred to a certain degree and sharing similar blood for the most part. Of course, there's many different projects and many different bloodlines that has spread out that DNA over time. But in general, I think my theory is that all tangerines for the most part were sort of muddled together early on in their stages to create the different unique lines that we have today. But this is the Inferno Tangerine, and this is specifically a Tremper Albino version. You can see Inferno does have a lot of red hues in it. Really nice, 
really awesome leopard gecko. Let's take a look at the Mandarin now. Now the Mandarin is one of my personal favorites right now. I love, love, love the Inferno, trust me. I started with the Inferno. We have purple and green color mixed in with our Inferno line. But what I really love about the Mandarin is the saturation of red that comes in to the gecko. It's just a deeper, darker, orangey red saturation. And that's what I'm going for in the leopard gecko hobby today is to make a redder and redder leopard gecko. So take a look at this and all the different orangey red tones that are just saturating this animal. Really, really cool. Now, a lot of mandarins do have really good carrot tailing, but this is a mandarin tango crush cross. Now, if you don't know about tango crush, tango crush is another line of tangerine that was sort of coined by Gecko Daddy, who's a great leopard gecko breeder. I've never bought from him, but I've bought in a lot of animals that have come from him. He's been around for a long time. He's bred a lot of geckos. To my knowledge, he has a lot of experience and he's an upstanding member of the leopard gecko community. He also started his own tangerine bloodline. And eventually after a few years of it having a really unique look, he coined it the Tango Crush bloodline. Now the best quality tangerines that I see from him are usually Tango Crushes. And if I'm remembering correctly, all of his Tango crushes are possible het for NDBE, nor desire black guys. And this guy's no different, possible het for NDBE. So NDBE was some weird trait that popped out a couple decades ago, revolving around the tangerine morph. And it typically was more connected to the Mandarin tangerine bloodline. So I'll have to do a little research wherever the Mandarin came from, if it was like China or Asia, but they breed a lot of it over there. The Mandarin bloodline was mixed in heavily with nor desire black eyes, which makes the gecko darker. It gives it black eyes. And in some instances, females might be infertile and it might crinkle the eyes a little bit. There's a little bit of an eye shape deformity. I will let you know more about my personal experience with NDBE as I come across it. It's not really something that I am worried about. It is a recessive trait, which means that if you breed a het to a het, only one in four typically should have the NDBE. And once you get an NDBE animal, you can kind of isolate that animal and just remove them from your projects. So if you're only breeding possible heads to possible heads, it's not gonna be that big of a deal, which is why I think Gecko Daddy did it because the Mandarin gene, even though it has the chance of carrying NDBE, has a really great chance of increasing orange and red saturation in the leopard gecko. And if you look at his leopard geckos, he is known for an orangey red tone on his leopard geckos. So really, really cool. I think the Mandarin and the Inferno projects are gonna make some great crosses. Okay, now this leopard gecko is just a bonus leopard gecko that I wanted to show you guys at the end of this video. We call her Widow. You can definitely see why in the design, the spider web design on her back. She was a pure Inferno and she was just one of her kind. You know, her other siblings did hatch out with some pattern, but nothing like her. And that just shows you the genetic variety that you can experience when breeding leopard geckos. Really, really cool. Very like clown-like, not like clown, the leopard gecko, but clown, like the actual clown pattern to it. It looks very like playful, very wonky, very spider-like, which is why Brooke, our volunteer, named her Widow. Widow will be bred to the Mandarin Tangerine this year. Imagine if we take this wonky pattern and breed it to the orangey red saturation of magma, which is our Mandarin Tango Crush Cross, what will happen? I think only great things. And look, really, really unique. Look at that bright red dot on her head right there. It's just a pure dot of red pigment. Like that is red for sure. In leopard geckos, we are definitely trying to get a red pigmented leopard gecko. Most of the time we get orangey red tones. That is just a pure red spot. And who knows, maybe it is really something to capitalize on with this specific leopard gecko bloodline. All right, guys, this girl's name is Fuega. And for a Inferno leopard gecko, she really has some dark red orange tones to her. We did breed her this year to both a pure Inferno male and then also Magma. We changed our mind about that last second. So I should be able to tell whose babies are which. For tangerines, it doesn't really matter. You're going for color. And as long as you 
you know what possible genetics are in that gecko, you could just list them as possible genetics. But one other thing I wanted to show you about tangerine leopard geckos is that sometimes, spontaneously, red stripe versions will occur. So I'm trying to get a good shot of the red stripe on this girl right now. You can kind of see it, but there are two kinds of red stripe and she is one of the kinds of red stripe. You could see that pale yellowish orange line that goes down her back. That line is straddled by two very distinct red, red stripes in the middle of her back. That is one variant of red stripe tangerine leopard gecko. I believe I've seen those red stripes on like bolds and other stuff too. So there's something that is causing enhanced orangey red pigment to heighten along that back spine right there. But it will straddle that back spine and it'll be very thin. It's only gonna be a couple millimeters wide on each side of that spine. That is one of the types of of red stripe. The other type of red stripe is kind of more of an orangey stripe, similar to bold stripe where the stripes come down a little bit wider down the leopard gecko's back. Those will be orange instead. And it's not really stripes of melanin. It's basically the tone of the gecko breaking up. So the gecko will have like a yellow base, but also it will have a layer of orange on top of that. But because the gecko is hypo, meaning no pattern on the back, something in the genetics causes this weird effect where it looks like it's an actual stripe going down both sides. The bold stripe in leopard geckos, those are melanin stripes. Those are actual black pigment that is making those stripes. It is not melanin that is making the stripes in those orange geckos. I still have to find a great way to like explain it, but it's definitely a unique phenomenon that is appearing in those geckos where something is going on with the layers of chromatophores, the things that cause color in the leopard gecko, and it just happens to spontaneously create these, what looks like these line bread traits. But as far as I can tell, it's more of spontaneous activity that is causing that reaction action to go on. So again, this is Inferno Red Stripe Leopard Gecko. All right, guys, I had to end it with my boy Magma. I love, love, love this guy. He was definitely one of our best purchases for 2021. Where did we buy him in 2020? I'm not sure. We have a whole video of unboxing of when we opened this guy. And in this video with this lighting setup, you can much more see his coloration saturation coloration saturation much better so he's an amazing boy thankfully he's a great breeder some leopard gecko males are not great breeders and so you could spend a lot of money on a leopard gecko male or female and it could not be a great breeder thankfully this guy is an excellent breeder and we've been breeding him to almost every single tangerine that we have and that's what i meant earlier is we had that one girl that we bred to a pure inferno which we have so this is magma's backup male right here you can see he's pretty cool too he's also a great orange color he has known genetics to be tremper albino he's possible head eclipse whereas magma here in my right hand is mandarin Tango Crush Cross, and he is 100% het for Tremper Albino and possible het for NDBE. Again, all Mandarins you buy, they're great, great genetics, but they're gonna have that possible het NDBE in there. To me, not such a big deal. I can weed out the NDBEs or keep them. I'm actually really excited to breed NDBE, which is a darkening gene and looks really, really cool into other morphs like Black Knight, Fasciolatus, Turkmenicus, Afghanicus. I'm really excited to mix those because it's just another project that we have to work on. So these are both our male breeders this year, Magma, and this boy actually doesn't have a name yet, but look at that red orange coloration in his face really, really great. Both of them, fantastic geckos that will make fantastic breeders with all the females that we have here. So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I really appreciate you sticking around all the way to the end. Please give it a like and a comment if you can. If you have not subscribed to us yet, we do videos like this all the time. So please give us a follow and I will be happy to fulfill your reptile addiction. I am a reptile fanatic. I love all kinds of reptiles. As a reptile breeder now, I had to narrow down and focus on three main reptiles reptiles for the start of our breeding operation. So here at Geeky Gecko Creations, we focus on leopard geckos, tegus, 
and you got it, ball pythons. So if you like any of that reptile content, give us a follow. I don't think you'll be disappointed. As soon as the new year comes around, we'll be back to making videos on a weekly basis. You know, with the holidays and traveling, I've just been trying to catch up on cleaning and breeding. You know, breeding season has started. This guy's already bred like 20 girls. So keep an eye out for his babies and everything that is to come. We appreciate you guys over here. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video. And whether this is your first time hearing it or your millionth time hearing it, remember, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.